For fans of Power Rangers or fans of the XCOM styling comes a game that melds both together. A unique formula that works so well it leaves you wondering why it hasn't been done before. You manage a small squad of fighters, or stuntmen, in this interesting TV show setting. Each hero has different abilities dependent on their class and setup. While claiming it isn't Power Rangers, there are several fourth wall breaks in this game, alluding to the, yeah, this is definitely a spin-off of Power Rangers. In fact, the narrative has several meta moments that allow for an overall grandiose and intriguing story. These stuntmen aren't in a fantastical world, no, they're on a TV set dealing with an overbearing director that demands them to perform specifically. We start at this moment in the game when the squad realizes they could have it better. Not only have it better, they could do the show better and act it out themselves. Yep, they take it upon themselves to start their own show. This is where we enter into the game as you control each member along in a TV show fashion. What does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's look further into this quirky 8-bit, fourth wall breaking little game, Chromo Squad. An uncommon premise used not very often by other games, Chromo Squad was made by Behold Studios, first on a Kickstarter back in 2013 through 2014, and was initially released April 30th, 2015. Due to this unique premise of operating a TV show or a production studio, each mission is treated like an episode where your characters are the stars. You're able to change the character names, who you want for each role out of five slots, set up a catchphrase for when you change to your power suits, and change the coloring of your primary outfits. Tons of options that allow you to make this your own distinctive storyline. Once you make your characters and you complete the tutorial, you end up back at your home base. Here, you have even more options for customization. You can upgrade your studio, get more equipment, hire a specific advertising agency, upgrade your mech suit, and deal with tons of crafting options for your studio and your characters. In fact, there are a lot of choices for your five characters regarding equipment. Each equipment, like weapon, armor, helmet, gloves, or boots, have unique properties to help increase your character's stats. What makes these enjoyable and of course adds some humor is that starting out, you have cardboard costumes put together with duct tape and nylon. Of course, as the episodes continue and the seasons grow, you'll see your outfits upgrade to higher and higher levels. Personally, I greatly enjoyed crafting in the beginning of the game, as you attempt to make certain benefits for your characters. However, in later seasons of the game, it is almost easier to just outright buy the equipment from the store instead of collecting all the small pieces you need to make a challenging sword or an overpowered helmet. That is because in the first season your budget is relatively tight, causing you to scrounge what you can to make what you can, thus the cardboard armor with sock boots. Money isn't an issue later on, which is why for me it was easier to just skip the crafting and go straight to the store for the source. What this does though is offer a good way to keep a new player intrigued enough to continue playing to the later seasons. Of course, you can't send your heroes out just in spandex, as they do need armor to protect themselves and weapons to help with their attacks. Each gear has its own stats. Now of course you can go through the lengthy process of crafting which gives you unknown stats sometimes or just buy out of the store with the stats already there. Of course, once you start accumulating newer equipment, the old must go out, which you can do with recycling, which also helps with crafting. Along with suiting your characters, each gets the option to use a weapon, like the tech who uses a gun, or the scout who uses daggers. These sometimes have benefits to increase your overall attack, but really are only used when you suit up, then pick that attack. These weapons do have a trade-off as they do produce massive damage, though you can't use them often as they have a few turn cooldown set up. Which leads us to what the combat is all about. Combat for this game is strictly turn-based, similar to XCOM where you move your enemies and of course you miss those hits. Not all the time though as this game is way more lenient than XCOM and your hits hit the mark more often than not. Enemies typically follow a specific simple pattern and mostly lack much in the way of extra abilities. So to make fights more interesting for your audience, as this is a TV show here and we are recording, you can use the teamwork star button to help propel another hero close to an enemy or you can combine two or more heroes in a teamwork punch to strike the enemy together. These acrobatic jumps increase your audience booster and make it more enjoyable experience as you try to figure out interesting ways to maneuver the terrain. 
Each member of the team also has a particular role. As we mentioned, scouts can use daggers, but they also can move great distances. While you have a support character who heals and can use a sword or a bow to attack. Then you have the main leader called the lead. <laughs> I know, so unique. Who can inspire your heroes into action. Each character brings something to the table, which makes all of these abilities work together beautifully. A type of synergy, you could say, that helps push this game forward. Along with your team members on the ground, you have a mech, of course. It is. Power range, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Chromo Squad game, would you expect anything less? After a few episodes, you are finally introduced to your mech, and get to attack with his giant sword. Since this game is an isometric, turn-based game, it takes a different vantage as you zoom out and it looks almost like an old Street Fighter game as you duke it out with a bad guy and your giant mech. This game relies heavily on its narrative and styling as you are in this pixel art game along with some amazing chiptunes. The meta really shines when the characters break the fourth wall or find something over and over again, like the trope with the narrator being messed up, saying things wrong. It is a goofy way to entertain. As you carry story along, you will see more than enough puns, horrible like quips, and all the goofy quotes anyone can handle. I'm not saying that is bad, in fact, I love the goofy humor of the game, and how it sometimes pokes fun at itself. As you can see, it is a lovely little game as you go to some pretty unique locations like the street corner, or the construction site, or back to the studio. I jest, but there is one issue I see that some of the previously used environments are reused later in the game, which can cause some repetition, which is never good. Though the game itself is aware of this as you sometimes come back to the construction site only to hear your heroes say, what, haven't we been here before? That's fun. This game is like Fruit Strike gum to me. You know the gum, that initially it's super sweet, tastes really good, but then it has real no substance after about 30 minutes? Sadly, this game lacked a lot for me. That's not saying this game isn't good. In fact, I think the game is great. It has a pretty funny narrative, neat options to upgrade your characters, nice customization options for your studio and mech, and the gameplay is fun. Though, in my opinion, the game hits you up front with all these interesting features, with no real longevity in the end, as you do end up repeating the crafting, the upgrading, and the same mechanics over and over again. Unfortunately, the special stats we mentioned don't really have any noticeable effect in the fighting. Due to this, I've given the game a 7 out of 10, for there are some issues with the game. Later on, crafting isn't really worth it as you can just buy your next armor upgrade. The AI in battles is a bit lacking and simplistic. The reusing of the same areas even though the game itself jokes about it. All these really affected the game, getting a higher than a 7 score. Though, like I said, this game is still worth it to play. Last I checked, it's about $14.99 on Steam. If you're looking to play it, I would wait till it's on sale, which I know Humble Bundle does a lot of those all the time, so make sure to check the link below. I hope you enjoyed my Chroma Squad review. If you enjoyed my video, please leave a like and a comment below on what you liked about this video, or if you have any other games you'd like me to check out. If you'd like to help support the channel, make sure to click subscribe. This is Distill Grizzly, wishing you luck with all your future games.